Hey guys, today we are reviewing another product by Lumeri. It's a 24 watt smart LED outdoor floodlight. It's very bright and great for a patio, barn, garage or a backyard. I'll show you how it looks in a handful of locations and share with you a valuable lesson that I learned. So I picked up this light just before the Christmas season to add some holiday lighting to my property. Since I can change the color of the light to pretty much any color, I'll be using this on other holidays like Halloween or St. Paddy's Day. It costs about $40 American on Amazon and I'll add a link to this and other items seen here today in the description below. Here's what we got on today's menu. I'm going to open up the box and show you quickly what's included. Then we're going to talk about the specs of this light and then we will review the basic app controls, including a lag test. I'll install it in a few locations to show you what it looks like. Then we're going to take it outside for a water test since it's IP66 waterproof. I'm also going to check what the Wi-Fi range is. Lumeri suggests a maximum distance of 90 feet or just over 27 meters. We're going to try to beat that today. We also set this up as a part of my Christmas decorations outside and verify the lowest operating temperature. Lastly, we're going to see if it survives my ultimate test. It does not. Okay, let's jump in and see what's in the box. So right off the bat here, we have the instructions, which are well written and easy to follow to get this light set up. Next, we have these mounting screws and anchors. And lastly, of course, we have the light. Wow, this is much heavier than I would have anticipated. Definitely a solid piece of equipment here. First impressions so far are great. First off, looking here at the power cord, it's quite beefy, another indication of its quality and weather resistance. The cord is quite longer on this LED light than others I've owned in the past, measuring in at 1.2 meters or 47 inches. Looking at the side of the light, we have a sticker showing the specs, including what appears to be the operating temperatures, minus 20 dot dot dot, 40 degrees Celsius. Now in Fahrenheit, that translates into minus four to 104. This is a little confusing because on their website, it says that the low is minus 25 degrees Celsius or minus 13 Fahrenheit. But moving on, I really like how they designed the back of this light to diffuse any heat away from the unit. And by the way, the shell here is made out of aluminum. The mount is also quite sturdy. To install the light, you have a couple of options. You can remove the mount using a hex key, which is not included, and attach it to your mounting surface and then reattach the light then point it in the desired direction and tighten the screws on the side. You also have the option of not removing the light and rotating the mount in a position where the light isn't prohibiting access to the screws using a screwdriver or drill. Located right here on top of the light, we have two Wi-Fi antennas. They feel really sturdy, but they're attached in a way where they can break off very easily if too much force is applied. It seems like this is a protection mechanism to prevent them from breaking under too much pressure, like if it was dropped. They reattach very easily, as you can see here. Remember, this unit only works with the 2.4 GHz frequency. And like I mentioned before, we'll do a range test here shortly. Zooming in here on the LEDs, there are 18 in total, which use up to 24 watts. There's red, green, and blue, and each use 8 watts each at a maximum. At its brightest, the unit will output 1200 lumens, which is very bright. As you can see here, where I am 600 feet or 180 meters away from the unit. Pretty bright down in the back of my backyard, and I am standing over here at my neighbors. So I'm also going to give you a sneak peek here of the LEDs flashing at full brightness. So consider this a trigger warning for bright flashing lights. The camera's focus is still a little bit confused, but it's cool to see the different parts of the LEDs light up. The beam angle or the measurement of the spread of light from this floodlight is 150 degrees, according to the Lumiere website, which seems pretty accurate for a floodlight. The box, however, indicates it's 110 degrees. As I shine the light onto my backdrop, I'm not going to try to measure it precisely and try to figure out the exact values and the amount of spill light, but this inconsistency does present a little confusion. All right, let's go ahead and download the app and get it set up. So once we have it downloaded, you're going to need to set up an account. And now we're going to plug in the light. It's going to flash red because that means it's in setup mode. 
Okay, so now we're adding the device. I'm adding it as light source BLT plus Wi-Fi. And yes, the device is blinking. Enter the Wi-Fi name and password. And easy peasy, we're connected. So let's start off with a quick lag test. Go into the device and we'll turn the power on. Off, on, not too bad. I slide the wheel. Wow, the lag is pretty much non-existent. Let's go on to the cellular network. And off. Maybe a quarter second delay. Well, wow, pretty much no lag. This is awesome. Next, we're going to touch on some of the basic functionalities within the app. So down in the bottom left, you already saw we have a power button. Pretty cool feature. If you unplug the light and then plug it back in, it'll remember the last setting and go back to that right away, which I'm pretty impressed with. So next here on the dimmer page, we can select a color and there's presets on the top. We also have a brightness bar on the very top of the screen that you can slide. So next we're gonna jump over to the scenes page and I have one already set up here called Dazzle and we can edit those. Click the edit button and then change the colors. So let's make this one red and purple and we can change the flash mode so that can be static, breathing, or flash. So I like the flash. And here at the bottom, we can specify the speed at which the flash occurs. So if I speed it up, it'll go faster. And of course, slow it down. And then when you're all done, hit the back button and confirm your changes. The scenes here at the bottom, these uh, cannot be edited. So these are default scenes that come with the device and you have no ability to, uh, to edit any of these. But there's lots here. Lots of cool ones here for various occasions. So our next stop on the tour is the music tab. The microphone picks up your voice really well and now the light is reacting to it. And I'm partially blinded. So lastly right here on the settings tab we have some options for scheduling and uh, some timers so you can uh, automate the lights. And lastly if you want to connect the light to a smart speaker click on the pencil icon up here in the upper right and then you have uh, your third party controls right here. All right, let's go set this light up outdoors in a few temporary locations and see how it looks. So here's our first temporary location outside by my front door. I'm going to set up a scene for Halloween. I'm going to edit the dazzling scene. So I'll delete the red and change the green to orange and I'll change the blue to purple. And I want this to flash as fast as possible. And here is how it looks. Not too bad. I placed the light here behind the pillar and when I back away, I really like how this sheds a lot of light onto my entryway. I wonder how this would look from the inside when the trick-or-treaters come around. Let's go set that up. Yeah, this is not a bad option either. Some pretty fun mood lighting for Halloween. Okay, let's try adding some consistent lighting or mood lighting to the back deck. I'm gonna use the working scene and I'm going to update the color to light blue. So I placed the light here on a tripod just to see how it would look outside. But I think um, right here, it would look pretty awesome if the light was attached to the ceiling. Not too bad at all. And in this next scenario, the light is located right here, pointing towards the fireplace. Let's change it and see how red would look. Hmm, I wonder how blue would look. Let's just try that out. Yeah, pretty cool. And let's check out what white would look like. I'm quite impressed. This is some very nice lighting for this location. Okay, so time to move on to our water test. It's above freezing here today, and I set up the light on my front step, and I'll spray it with a good dose of water from my garden hose. Awesome, no issues so far. The light continued to work as expected after performing this test. All right, so now it's time to move on to our range test. Lumeri recommends a maximum distance from your Wi-Fi modem or access point to be 90 feet or just over 27 meters. So long story short here, we are at 260 feet or 80 meters. And you can see how far away we are. The house is here in the background. And if we have a look at me, you can really see how cold it is on this winter's night. 
My neighbors probably think I'm crazy, but that's okay. Let's run inside and see if we still have connectivity. So starting up the camera, yeah, we have power and it turned on pretty quick. Okay, now let's uh, try a few different colors. And now a scene. There's actually no lag whatsoever, just as if I was in the studio again. So next up, we're going to set up this light as a part of my Christmas decor. I'll install it right here on this tripod for now, looking towards these trees. Here's how it looks in the daytime. And now it's nighttime. The light does a very impressive job of flooding this area with the three different colors I have it programmed for. Now when I swing around, you get an appreciation again for how bright this light is. Okay, so it's been a couple of days since I set up the light and the temperatures have dropped significantly. It's minus 30 degrees Celsius right now, which is minus 22 Fahrenheit. I'm taking a risk here and I'll turn on the lights to see if they work. I have my thermal imager with me as well. And reading the imager, we are at minus 23.6 and minus 25.2, which is about minus 13 Fahrenheit on the back of the light. It's obviously giving off a little bit of heat. And over here on the front, we have pretty close to the outdoor temperature, minus 29.6 Celsius or minus 22 Fahrenheit. So back inside again, let's do the same test by running this light at room temperature. The back of the light is showing a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius, which is about 104 Fahrenheit. When we flip the light around to the front, it's just shy of 30 degrees Celsius or 86 Fahrenheit. All right guys, so it's a few days later and it's even colder outside now. It's dipped to minus 40 Celsius and minus 40 Fahrenheit. I'm considering not running the risk here of turning on the light, but my curiosity is gonna get the better of me and I'll activate the light. The sequence from red, white, and green has actually stopped working, unfortunately. The red seems fine. The white is a little pink and the green is pretty much non-existent. It looks more pink than anything else. So here we are in the studio. Let me give you a better view of what I mean. So if we go to red, it works just fine. If we go to blue, it works just fine. And as I slide the color wheel down to the green, there's nothing. And when I click on pure green on the app, the light turns off. So there's a one year warranty on this unit, but this failure is a result of my own desire to risk operating the device outside of its specified conditions. All right, so I guess that means we're going to end the video right here. Overall, I really enjoyed using the floodlight and found it very versatile for various locations. The app is super easy to use and offers lots of cool features. I definitely recommend this unit for a patio, garden, shed, or garage. It, um, but just make sure you stay within the operating temperatures. Again, the links are in the description below. Give me a thumbs up if you found this video helpful and please subscribe to my channel and receive notification when I publish a new video for more home tech DIY projects you can do yourself. Thanks for watching.